In this video, we're going to walk through the solution to a practice problem. Uh, if you haven't tried it yet, give it a try first and then uh, watch the rest of the video. So in this one, we are being asked to calculate the behavior for a sample of helium gas. Um, and it's gonna be one of these situations where it's gonna be under high pressure, um, 120 atmospheres of pressure. So we're gonna compare this value to what we would calculate with the real um, with the ideal gas law as well. And to simplify things, instead of calculating pressure or volume, we're just going to calculate the difference in temperature we would calculate using the real versus the ideal gas law. It simplifies a little bit uh, plugging into and solving the equation. So let's first calculate it with the ideal gas law because it's so much more straightforward. Um, so our information that we're given is that we have helium we have 20 moles, we have a 10 liter cylinder, and it's at 120 atmospheres of pressure. Um, so our ideal gas law, we're gonna solve for temperature. So our PV equals NRT uh, becomes temperature is equal to pressure times volume divided by the moles divided by R. Um, and so plugging in, we're gonna get a uh, pressure that's 120 atmospheres. The volume was only 10 liters divided by our number of moles, which is insane. It's like 20. And then our uh, ideal gas constant or our gas constant with atmosphere pressure, uh, pressure units. So that's 0.082121 to one liters times atmospheres divided by moles Kelvin. Okay, just plugging that into our calculator, we get a value that is 731 Kelvin. Remember, this is at our ideal behavior. All right, so now let's compare. So we're looking at helium. We're going to need the van der Waal constants for helium. So uh, looking those up in the table that was provided in the lecture notes, we see that A for helium is gonna be equal to 0 0.0342 and B is equal to 0 0.02370. So we're gonna incorporate that into our real gas law. Uh, so I'm gonna write it back up here. So it's gonna be our pressure plus its correction using A times our volume that's corrected for the particle size. And helium is pretty small. Um, so I'd expect that to have a small impact on this one, especially since we're at uh, lower high pressures of only 120. And that'll be equal to the number of moles times R and T. So plugging all of our values in and solving for T. Um, so I'm going to set T here equal to, and I'll have my, my pressure and volume divided by N and R. So let's go ahead and start adding these values in. We have 120 atmospheres plus our 0 0.0342, all times our 20 moles. Let's fix that divided by our volume squared. Now uh, that's all times our, our volume plus it's correct with it minus its correction value. So that's our 10 liters minus our moles of 20 moles. I need a little more space here. Times our uh, B correction factor. All right, I'm gonna divide all of that then by R and T, I'm sorry, N and R. So I've got my 20.0 moles and R is still 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres divided by moles Kelvin. And this all equals T. So it's a lot to plug into your calculator, but with all of the parentheses, once you actually get it in and calculate it, we'll calculate a value that is 697 Kelvin. And this is for our real gas behavior. And so we see that our temperature is actually gonna be smaller than what we would predict with the ideal gas law as we correct for um, our pressure being lower than expected and our volume being slightly higher than expected. And so really it's that correction to the pressure that's probably doing more than anything else to change that temperature that we'll expect to actually see if we conducted this experiment. 